Hi, my name is Diana, and I'm a librarian at the Stone Monroe Falls Public Library. And what I want to show you today is a couple of the computer peripherals that you can check out. Uh, they're part of our eclectic collection. And we have two things to show you here. The first one is a floppy disk drive. Um, now this is for your old school floppy disks. Remember these? They're very small, they're very outdated, obsolete, but you may still have important information stored on one that you want to get onto uh, a real computer, back up to a flash drive, or something like that. So we have the technology for you to do that. Computers don't come with this drive anymore, but you can put them, um, you can get them, and you can put them into your uh, USB ports. So here's my USB connector, and I'm going to, oops, not on that side, uh, but I'll move it over here to this side, don't pull it by its tail, uh, and plug it right into a USB port. And what happens is that the computer will now, um, like, load it up and tell us that it's ready to use. And so now we can find this if we just look at the File Explorer. So I'm going to go down on the taskbar. I'm going to click on File Explorer, Windows Explorer. And um, the various drives, we should be able to see if we click on Computer. And right here is our floppy disk drive right there. Um, so what you do then is you can put, the, put a floppy disk in it. Maybe it has your dissertation from... 1999. Um, and once the disk is in there, it just snaps in. You can double click the drive, and then it should show you what's in there. This happens to be uh, a list of magazines that we subscribe to at one time. If I double click this, it will open. But if I just want to copy it onto my computer, the easiest way is to take my mouse pointer, press down the left mouse button, and then just drag it off onto the desktop, and it ought to make a copy for me. And is it doing that? Not so much. Hang on. This other thing about these is that they're very slow. There we go. That looks like it's working better. So it made a copy to my desktop, and I, I, now I can open that with Microsoft Word. I can make changes to it. I can edit it. I can do whatever I want. Um, the same thing would work to move something to the floppy disk, but there's really no point in doing that because, like I said, they're so small and, um, and really outdated. I'm going to pop the disk out, and unplug the drive. Set that aside. All right, the other drive I wanted to show you is this one. This is a CD slash DVD burner drive. And um, usually these are built into laptops these days and computers. But every now and again, especially if you bought one that was ultralight, um, you might not have this drive built in because those super skinny ones, they just don't have that room to put a drive like this in. Um, the other kind of thing might be if you, um, you know, are using something uh, like a tablet. Uh, but this will connect to, um, to a USB port on a basic computer. And in this particular case, it's got a couple of layers here. So the first end, this end goes into the USB port. And then it has a port in the back. This is the power. This is no, I lied. No, I didn't. There we go. This is, that's the power. I've now got power to this drive. Then the other one, this is the data cable. Uh, so this is going to use up two USB ports on your computer when you're using it. And it's got a sort of a printer cable style connector that goes in the back of the drive, nice and firm. And, of course, I got it the wrong way up. There we go. Okay, so now this one, um, if you notice down at the bottom of the screen there, um, it installed uh, a driver for it very quickly. It got its driver from the internet, um, or possibly off of this itself. And, and now it's telling me that it's ready to use. So I can close that little message window. Just like the other, I'm going to open up Windows Explorer, and I'm going to look at the computer. And so now I've got two DVD drives. I've got the one that was built in and the one that's right over here. Um, so why would I need to, to have a CD drive, even if, I, even if you have one in your computer, 
Uh, every now and again, you might have a situation where like your old one breaks. Um, so in order to use it, there is, I don't know if you can do a close up on this, but there's a little, little button on the front. I press it and the um, drawer pops out. And this drawer is very much like one that you'd find in a laptop. There's a hub and this hub is what you're going to press the CD down onto. So it's got a lock in place on the hub to work properly. Some of your older um, CD and DVD drives on, lap on desktop computers, uh, you just place the disc in but, and you don't have to snap it onto the hub, but in this case you do have to snap it on. So I have a mystery disc here that somebody gave me, so we're going to find out what this has on it. And I'm going to press the disc down onto the hub and then I'm just going to shove the drawer in and it latches into place. And on the computer screen, you can see that it's kind of, for a, for a second there, it did something. That's, that's basically showing that dr the drive is now in the process of spinning itself up. So we're going to wait for a second. Whoop, wrong one. My bad. Okay, we're going to try that. Ah, here we go. So now that this disc has fully spun up, you can see that the name, it says Star Wars on it. This was something that we used for um, one of our programs last year. Um, so I'm going to double click the, the E drive, which is the one that, um, that we just put that disc in. And now it shows the Star Wars trivia file is on there. So if I double click on that, it's going to open up and play. And lo and behold, this is our trivia project, uh, our trivia contest that we had for that project. So um, our teen librarian is the best. She does these great, great, great ideas. All right, I'm going to stop that. So that's playing as a movie. Um, if it were uh, if it were an Excel file or a Word file, I could just open it up and um, and work on it. Now, when it comes to saving things on these um, on CD or DVD drives, um, you can save things onto blank media. So, since this one's not blank, I would open I would uh, open the drive. Come on, baby. There we go. Put this one away. And here, this one is a CD-ROM, a CDR, and it can hold 700 megabytes worth of space, worth of data files. Um, DVDs can hold approximately four gigabytes, so that's a lot bigger, but it's still not as big as even an inexpensive flash drive these days. Flash drives have come down to the point where you can get a, a 32 gig flash drive for like 10 bucks in a lot of cases, and that's like, what would that be, eight times? I can't do math. Uh, lots, lots more storage space than these guys have. So, um, so yeah, this one, so this holds 4.7 gigabytes is what it says on it. That's the maximum, you almost never get the max. And then the CDs are 700 megabytes, so not uh, a lot smaller than that. So. Okay, so I'm gonna try a blank DVD from this nice little box, hopefully these are all good. And I'm gonna put it into the drive and close that and now we'll wait for a moment so because this is blank media it's not going to come up with a name notice how it says dvd rw drive and it says there's a dvd r in there and because it's not coming up with any kind of a name or description um, we can uh, we can know that that is ready to be filled up and also because we have this large bar, this empty white bar. That's the same kind of thing as you would see over here on the C drive or on any of the network drives. It's showing you how full this is, which is not at all. It's very empty right now. So if I wanted to take a file such as this magazine list and I can drag it over and drop it right onto that, um, that drive, uh, you actually have two options when you're copying files onto a CD or DVD-R. And you can use it like a flash drive, or you can use it, uh, you can create a CD that you could play on a CD or DVD player. The difference being, um, if you select that top option, which as you can see is selected by default for us, um, you'll be able to use this as a, uh, a disk over a series of different days and times. So you can put some stuff on it now, you can edit things and save new versions of them right back right on that CD. 
you can um, uh, add things until it's close to being full. You know, you may not have four and a half gig of something that you want right away, but you might add things to it. Um, and what the people use these for is for backup. Uh, and because uh, they're not really ideal to replace a flash drive because saving to them is much slower, but they're definitely better. Um, you know, th this was a generation way ahead of uh, the technology that we had 10 or 12 years ago. So, um, so, so I can uh, use it as a flash drive. On the other hand, if I want to take, if I want to put a bunch of pictures on here and then put them in the DVD player um, on my TV set, and have it run through a slideshow. Most, most of your modern DVD players will just do that if you put a photo disc in. Um, what I would do then was I would, I would choose the second option. I would burn files um, onto it, and then whatever files I'd burned would be permanent, and the disc would be, they, they call it finished um, uh, or mastered. So when you're done, you can't make changes. There's no editing things that you've burned onto a disc in that way. Um, so if I wanted to take a bunch of pictures and, uh, and make them so that I could play them on my TV set, that would be the ideal way to go. Does that make sense? All right. I hear you say yes. <laughs> um, so it's, again, it's a drag and drop situation. Let's see what we got on here. Um, Go over here and oh yeah, I can uh, cancel that for right now. Pictures. All right, so here I have some pictures, some sample pictures. All right, um, I'm going to open up the drive in its own window so I can see them separately. And I'm going to tell it that I want to use this with a CD player. So I picked that. I'm say next. And I'm just going to get it so I can see these two side by side. I'm going to select all of these little images here. I'm just going to drag them and drop them onto the DVD-RW drive. And now, notice how it says up here, files ready to be written to the disk. They are not burned yet. Um, I have to actually do it. So, let's see. Burn to disk is my option right here on the menu bar. I'll click, and I'll call this photo disk. And I'll say next. And so right, what it's doing now is it's sort of prepping, it's burning. And now it says it's burning the files. This should hopefully go quickly because there's only a few files. Okay, we're on the final steps to finish the disk. Um, it thinks we have 30 seconds left. I'm not sure I believe it, but we'll, we'll let it go for a little while, see how it does. And... And what this finishing does, that's the part where it lets you then, um, it, and it's, it's just popped right out of my, of my drive. It opened itself. And there we go. And so now it says, do you want to create another disk using the same files? Well, no, I sure don't. Um, so I'm going to say finish, and I'm not going to check this checkbox that says burning, burn them to another disk. Finish, and that is done. All right, so, so when you want to put a CD or a DVD into this drive, once you've got it all hooked up and everything, it's got that hub that we talked about. So I'm going to lay the disc on it carefully, and I'm going to press it down onto the hub, and then I'm going to just push the drive drawer in until it closes, and now it's going to spin up that disc. Now this disc just has some pictures that I burned onto it, so it, uh, if I look in Windows Explorer, we're going to look at computer, and here's our DVD drive, and uh, it, it's telling us that it's called photo disc, see it gives the name, once the disc has spun up, it shows the name of that disc, and I can Double click it, and then I can see what's on here. These are image files, and uh, it's not really giving me any thumbnails at this point. View, large icons, there we go. So these are the pictures that are on that disk. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you find this useful, and we hope that you enjoy using um, our, the objects in our eclectic collection. Have a great day.